All righty, let's pick this one up from here. The slabs have all been made, so let's build the table. Ended up with six slabs, so I'm now, I'm gonna use my jointer uh, to joint all these edges. Uh, ideally, you joint one side, run it through the table saw to get it parallel. As you can see, I'm limited on space, so I've just labelled all my um, edges that are butting up against each other, and I'm just taking them over one at a time, jointing them up, and I'm just gonna work my way along. Got these thick pieces on here, so when the edge comes around, I don't want to end up with this ugly little slither. So you want a good couple of centimeters there, so that edge is nice and chunky. Then I just trim up another chunky piece, stick it on that end, um, which has fallen short a little bit, and then that'll give that same nice curve on the other side as well. Now, I'm loving this little trim router. It's very versatile tool. Um, saves buying a biscuit cutter. I've borrowed one in the past, which is great. Um, but this thing does the job. Got a four mil slot cutter. And then just your stock standard biscuits. Now, also in the past, I've come up with this big routine to make these biscuits fit exactly perfect in their slots. I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm just gonna cut a big slot, stick in as many as I want. Um, then I don't have to do any of that brain power. And um, the more the merrier, I suppose. It's a beautiful thing. So it occasionally dawns on me that I bite off a little bit more than I can chew. Um, and now that I've moved this shop around, it's I'm a little bit limited on space and maneuverability. So I've just got to go through this routine every time I want to do a large glue up like this table. Using the router to cut these grooves, don't forget to clean off your little bloody squeeze out because your router's going to hit it, make life hard. I'm going to slot these uh, pieces of red gum in, could be iron bark, it's nice and hard. Anyway, it's not actually this piece of timber that I'm relying on as the strength, it's these tiny little bonds um, to decrease the bending moment of all these individual slats. So they're all going to be bonded in individually against this piece, and this is how it's explained to me. Not the greatest explanation. I'm hoping that this bond here, like plywood, will be nice and strong. Makes sense. It makes sense to me. Been a bit overzealous with the glue here, but I don't want to miss any points of bond. There's a couple of little dodgy bits where the router just shifted a bit. Because um, it is jumping through all these different densities, you really do have to take your time. Uh, you probably could help yourself by putting another rail just to almost lock it in. Now I'm only putting these screws in purely to pull this um, piece of timber down and then I'm going to take these out later on so I can then clean it off. So these aren't actually needed. Um, it's basically the clamping mechanism. Okay, as you can see, although I did bash it down with a hammer, just using the screws has pulled it down that little bit more, a bit more glue squeezed out. So hopefully a better bond. I'm all set up to cut the circle. I've just made another jig. I didn't have one uh, long enough. Uh, what I've then physically done is run the router down just so it's lightly scratching the timber just to make sure that I am inside um, any voids and I don't cut any corners. I've got a router bit, nice long one, goes all the way through so I don't have to stuff around flipping it over, cutting it out with a jigsaw or whatever. This works good for me. Little heart failure here as I realised I only took the original measurement from the radius. Never actually double checked to have the right diameter. I just lost the last bit of footage of the final cut. No big deal, but I did just show I put some spaces underneath the slab here so the router could pass by these steel posts I've got, which I keep there to make sure this thing stays nice and flat until it's all 
reinforced, ready to go. Okay, bang some chamfers all around to uh, reduce the profile and then also using the trim router just to get rid of the excess from underneath the reinforcement. Okay, drilling through the hardest wood in the world with the spade bit, but they, they are sharp. I did have the measurement wrong initially, got the right depth now, uh, then realized get out the dust extractor and suck away all those chips, make life easy on myself, uh, and then bore through with the drill. Okay, so I've attached the frame with uh, threaded inserts and these bolts. I originally had a washer in the hole. Um, all that's done is given me less play so these four bolts line up. Um, this wood is so hard, the, the washer's pretty redundant. It's not needed. I've bored that hole out just a little bit more, plenty for the head to sit on, but enough to give that couple of mil play. All these holes are lined up good. Um, but if the client's assembling it, you don't want them potentially cross-threading one of these bad boys. So, gonna make it nice and easy on them. Oh, Jesus! Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, what I was trying to show you is this thing is now rock solid, just with these four attachment points. Um, I've got the bracing underneath. That's doing its job to hold it all together. Um, there is that, when I hold the table from one end, I can see just that little bit of movement from the weight on all these laminations. But on top of this frame, um, this thing's going nowhere. So I'm, I'm very happy with what I've done here. It's nice and strong, nice and reinforced. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so sticker sponsor shout out is Lee from Home and Made Woodworking. Uh, if you like this sort of big table sort of stuff, definitely go and check him out on Instagram and now YouTube. That's not his sticker. That's his sticker. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Going with a bit of CA glue from Starbond Adhesives. If you want to get yourself 10% off these products, I have links for those down below. So you can see it is, it is pretty rigid. I'm very happy with it. Okay, just going to whip up a bit of epoxy. I've created some of the, some more of these voids because um, that's what the customer wants to give it a bit of something something on top. Anyway, I'm just using up a bit of this old stuff, and uh, I'll put a bit of blue tint, make it look cool. I've banned myself from using these big fat pencils in the shop now, just in an effort to be more accurate. So they uh, they make good stirrers. Also, hot tip, don't leave your epoxy covered stirring pencil on your table. Okay, going with a oil-based poly, just thinned out a little bit. Here we go. C is for cookie. See what I did there? It's a big cookie. Take you back to the old Sesame Street days. I was starting to freak out a bit about the epoxy, but as soon as that clear goes over the top, my jingos. <laughs> Although I was worried, when the client says the crazier the better, you're pretty safe. Okay, there's a trapezoid frame. Again, really happy with that. Uh, that was two videos ago I showed how I made that. And I may have mentioned previous to this, so I just showed you how I actually made the slabs. So. I could concentrate on the top for this one. I had great intentions of actually trying to figure out how long a project like this takes me. But I hit the shed, I get carried away, I forget to look at the time. It is built over several weeks, but that might be a couple hours here, a couple hours there. So I, I really don't have a clue. It is a hobby. It's all good fun. Um, but there it is, table, done. I don't know what else to say. So anyway. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I know I say that a lot, but it really does help me that you guys get involved. Thanks very much. Alrighty, the big table is out and I can actually move again. So it's on with the Carl Pope Builder Chair. Got to finish that off real soon.